Hello Malaysia, Hello World. Apa khabar? Apa khabar? Welcome to our Edu Channel Malaysia Talk, or better known as ECM Talk. I'm Raja Shahrul, your host. Today's topic: Why paranoid over retirement age? Interesting as it sounds, but let me briefly start off by trying to understand what's the big hoo-ha about retirement age. It's purely just numbers. We have all heard when older and younger workers or employees are compared, the world and employment are both more digital than before. Something the younger employees are more at ease with. They will be employed for much longer while possessing the energy and zest of youth. It is a preconception that spills over into recruitment, with age bias still prevalent. In Malaysia, the Minimum Retirement Age Act of 2012, and which was enforced in 2013, clearly stated the minimum retirement age of an employee shall be at the age of 60 years old. There are certain rules to this act, which I will not go into for now. In the United Kingdom, they have something quite similar to our act, but followed by other acts that complement or strengthen its existence. Example, they have the Pension Act, the Equality Act, and others. What about in Malaysia? Is this preconception for or against the beauty age of retirement? After all, we in Malaysia tends to take it easy upon reaching 50s onwards. It is absolutely different in other parts of the world, especially in the UK, Australia, and the US. Let me introduce to you my guest speaker for today to give us his non-biased views and opinion on this topic for discussion today. I have here with me a good friend of mine, Professor Azrin Arifin, a senior academician from one renowned private university here in Kuala Lumpur. Prof, welcome to ACM Talk. Selamat datang. Apa khabar? Khabar baik, terima kasih. Why the pink, Prof? Oh God, it's Tuesday <laughs> today and I've been told by a good friend that wearing pink on Tuesday is actually the color of harmony. So there we go. Harmony, pink, interesting. I have a few questions with me that I would like to share with you, Prof. Let me begin with my first question. As in Malaysia, the retirement age stays at 60 years old in comparison to the UK's retirement age, which is at 65 plus plus. Hence, there was a serious debate on the retirement age extension. So why do you think people get this paranoid feeling about retirement age? Sir? Th th thank you very much. Um, I think before I move forward into my opinion, um, you, you mentioned that I was going to give you an unbiased opinion. Exactly. Um, yes. uh, it, it can be a yes and no because I'm, I'm at the age where um, I'm approaching 60 as well. So um, I, I'm going to be as, as neutral as possible. And uh, let me just define the I word. I use the word unbiased again. Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh, let, let me just give you the uh, definition of paranoia. Uh, yes. I just got this from Google. Yes, please. A mental condition characterized by delusions of persecution unwarranted jealousy or exaggerated self-importance mm -hmm. typically worked into an organized system. Mm -hmm. So I think, yes, there is a paranoia about this, but um, you've got to be fair to both employers and employees. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've, I've been in, in the workforce for 34 years now, so it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I've not changed my job. I mean, it's I've changed jobs as in from one place to the other, okay. but I've never been other than a lecturer. You've always been in, the, in academia, academia yeah. all my life. Yeah. Yeah. So I have actually fallen in love with the job. Well, it's, it's actually... I like the way you define it. It's, it's actually yes, being yeah. in love. You know, yeah. there's a difference between falling in love and being in love. You can fall in and out of love, but if you're in love... That would then, be the other topic that I need then, to talk then, about. Then yeah. It's, yeah. it's for life. Now, yeah. the reason why I'm saying that is... Yeah. You know, Confucius said, choose a job you love mm. and you'll never have to work a day in your life. That's beautiful, isn't it? It is, yeah. 
And uh, well, I mean, as I uh, as I've always mentioned, Andy Williams' love is a many splendid thing, and the job becomes the definition of true splendor in this case. So, if you are actually in love with your job, you're doing it very well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The fact that you've been asked to leave mm -hmm. at a certain age mm -hmm. becomes um, a disaster, mm. in a way. Mm. I mean, lots of people say that you can spend the rest of your life tending to your grandchildren, doing things that you've never had the chance to do before in your life, yeah. and um, taking a rest or going on a vacation. Mm. But if you've been actively involved in your job for the last 30 years, mm. it will be a difficult uh, challenge Up to actually yeah. go out and do yeah. something different, mm. uh, albeit it will be um, something that would benefit you. Mm. So paranoia, yes, but um, as far as the employer is concerned, they talk about things like getting rid of dead wood. <laughs> how dead can it would be yeah. well it depends yeah and they also talk about the making way for young employees correct to get to the positions that you've been filling in right and the other one is they talk about from hr perspective mm. is that they want to prevent talent movement mm. so if you don't cap it at a certain age the younger generation might not be able to get to that position mm. and worse they might leave mm. so I I think to be to be fair to both sides um, we'll, we'll have to be very considerate of people who have been in the job for a long time yeah. particularly those who have contributed so much to the organization absolutely yeah that they what, what what the HR can do or what, what the employers can do is to have um, a retirement plan in a way that people are still in their job yeah. uh, for a meaningful number of years, yeah. um, uh, although not full time, but mm. it sort of eases them out of the um, the, the routine of, of of the chore that they've been in, yeah. and at the same time be a coach to those who are actually climbing up to the same position. True. True. So um, the. My, my take is, is, is always that if someone has been contributing so much, mm. then there is a lot more to be contributed actually. Uh, although people are saying that, you know, with, with digitalization, um, some, you know, when, when you reach 55, you don't learn things as fast as what a young person mm. can do. Mm. I can challenge that. Um, please, please do, I, yes. I, I, I think, um, you know, with the COVID-19 mm. pandemic, mm. we were all thrown into the deep end. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, on the 17th of March, there we were in our classrooms, mm. because I'm an academic. Mm. On the 18th of March, I was at home looking and staring at my laptop yeah. and trying to figure out how to do Zoom. <laughs> Did I take long to learn? Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. It was just yeah. a couple of phone calls yeah. and I learned. Yes the thing quite fast. Yep. So it is not true that when you get past 55 or 60, that you're not able to learn things as yeah. fast. Yeah. You may not be as agile physically as a 30 year old, but, but I think, again, mm. the years of experience that you've mm. built in a particular job mm. is actually something w which, is, which is a plus point yeah. uh, for you to carry on, but not forever. Yeah. You know, I was talking about Deadwood. Um, mm. A lot of people are not healthy when mm. you get past a certain mm. age. Of course. Yeah. But there are also people who are young who are not healthy. I was just coming to that. Yes, you know. yes, yes. So yeah. it, it's a question of mm. balance, yeah. a, a balancing act yeah. between young and old. Exactly. And I don't yeah. think age should be a discriminatory yeah. Uh, point. Yeah. We've got women who are in the reproductive years. Yeah. And they have to tend to their children. They have to take leave. Yeah. Are we discriminating them? Yeah. No, we're not. Yeah. We're yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, they're as good as everyone else. So, same goes with people who've gone past 60. Yeah. Um, some are still healthy. healthy. I mean, within that age range. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I was growing up, my, my dad retired at 
55. Mm. Now, at 50, actually, he left because mm. he was so unhappy with his job. Oh, okay. Mm. And you know what? He's in his, into his 80s now. Mm. And he's still, I mean, he, 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 he's got a walking stick. But, but he's 80, bro. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's 85. Yeah, 85, yeah. 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 But he, he thinks as, as, you know, as sharp as, as, sharp, um, yeah. as, as a 60-year-old. There you go. So um, if you have to leave a job at 60, mm. then I think there's, 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 there's a lot of... Uh, it's a lot of things that, that the organization is going to miss out. going to miss, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It was a very long answer to a short question, wasn't it? Yeah. Interesting, Rob. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah. Because uh, it depends on where you are as well, around uh, anywhere in this world, isn't it, Rob? That's I mean, right. Malaysia, they are more uh, uh, receptive to this, isn't it? I mean, uh, how do you look at it? I mean, I don't think in the UK they have problems with people reaching 60 and not being continued or extended on their, on their uh, uh, contract at yeah, work. Yeah, yeah you're quite right. Yeah. Um, when I started work in, mm. in way back in the 80s, um, mm. I was supposed to retire at 55. Mm. But somehow, as you mentioned, mm. the law changed and now it's become 60. But before it got to 60, it was 58 and oh <laughs> 60. God. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm at the stage where mm. 60 is, mm. is the retirement age. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's the retiring retirement age. Mm. Um, but you're right, you know, having spent many years um, mm. in, in England as, mm. you know, as, as, as a student and also yes, as a yes. practitioner, yes. Um, it, they, they're not so stuck up about this because, no, they're um, not. I mean, some of the professors actually extend up to, I would say, 70. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you, you got to stop working somehow, somehow at some stage. Oh, I mean, yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if you stop early enough, then the, the mental processes <laughs> yeah are going to deteriorate, I yep. think, um, at a faster rate. I mean, sure. this is borne out from, from science. Yeah. Um, yeah. In England, the elder people mm. would do crossword puzzles. Yep. And I, you know, I, very asked, common, yeah. I asked him, why are you doing yeah. it? Yeah. It keeps my brain going, he says. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, there's some truth in that. Mm. But in Malaysia, in the past, mm. you know, teachers, for example, when mm. they got to 55, mm bye-bye and mm. and then when you look at them mm. they're, they're still productive yeah um, it was at one point where English teachers were being called back mm. because you know you, you can't learn the language overnight yeah it's something that you accumulate over the many years and the more you teach the more you learn that, that's what they say you know true, true. Mm. teachers actually are learning themselves when they teach and there's no age limit to it yeah Th there isn't there isn't yeah. um, mm. Because I work at the university, um, I, I can tell you that, you know, for, for a senior academician, being at the university for longer periods of time mm. has its advantages and disadvantages, of mm. course. Yeah. Mm. The disadvantages would be that, you know, you, you tend to miss out on some of the uh, technologies and some of the, um, the things that people, young people do and you, you tend to not want to do them or, mm. or you just don't have any interest mm. to do it. Mm. The good thing is that with all the experience that you have, uh, research becomes very, uh, very crucial. Okay. You can't do research overnight and you can't just get someone with, you know, somebody who just obtained his PhD yesterday yeah. to come and, and do research straight away. Mm. They've mm. got to go through postdoctoral processes and, mm. and a senior professor would, would be able to impart mm. lots of his experience and knowledge mm. for the betterment of the university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can't think of any other positions mm. where um, experience, of course there are, yeah. mm. uh, but I, I speak from the viewpoint of, of an educator. Yeah, yeah. So in the UK, to answer your question again, it's a very long answer. Yeah. The, um, the, yeah, they don't have any qualms about. They don't. They, they don't. don't. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they really uh, appreciate those who are already in the fifties and above. Yeah. They do. Yeah. But, but it's not for everyone. I no. mean, you have to. Understand I mean, you it. can always gauge them. That's you know? right. I mean, their concern. I think in Malaysia, our concern has always been about health, ah, prof. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. When you get into that age, gosh, you know, what's going to happen? You know, they're going to fall sick. They're going to go senile, extra, etc. Et but then again. Uh, there are people half the age of these people who are walking in and out of the hospitals or clinics, bro. Yeah. Isn't it? I mean, uh, so you, they can't use that as an excuse. Yeah. 
of not giving these people a chance. But after all, not everybody wants to go into into that working uh, uh, for the rest of their life, isn't it, bro? It's these selective people that who who we feel that can still contribute, like you said earlier, bro. Who can be a, a big contributor to, to the organization? I think that is how I look at it. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think some sometimes, um, you know, um, there's always this um, dilemma mm. uh, within the organization whether to keep someone or to let them go. Yeah. But if, if you're talking about after the age of 60, mm. true enough, you tend to get. The chances of getting sick would be would be more, of course, of yeah. course, yeah, because of the aging process, of and course, um, yeah. it would be um, economically not sound for the uh, company to to actually keep on uh, spending money mm. on on your on health bill. Mm. Um, so, a- as you said, it's not for everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you you've really got to look at the, uh, the health of the person. Um, and um, the amount of money that you're going to spend on, on his or her health uh, expenses uh, would have to be balanced against the advantages that you would get by having him still for keeping the person, yeah. for, you yeah. know, serve the company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but you're right. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've seen young people who go in and out of hospital, and yes. and they're costing the company absolutely a lot more money as well. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and um, yeah. it's. Um, and not they're not productive, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but because yeah. they've got to be in the job for yeah. you know for a while for yeah. until they're fifty five, so you just have to keep to, on to deal with it, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> you just, just have to keep. It. Yeah. Okay, sir. So my next question. Most people believe that higher retirement age is the way to protect worker welfare and enhance the well being of workers, but it might also prolong the career path of those who hardly contribute as much. Not to mention that some individuals in their 60s might not be able to work efficiently or even struggling with their health problems. So, what do you have to say to this? I think I've answered this part. I think you have part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's true that um, the reason why uh, the um, people who are above 60 have to go is because um, they they need to provide the um, the pathway for the younger people to go up mm. the, the ladder, so mm. to speak. Mm. Uh, but, but then again, um, as you said, um, that there are people who are younger and not contributing. Yeah. And um, if you're talking about their career progression, mm-hmm. as I said, um, the selected older um, individuals mm. will be the coaches. Yeah. And and that should enhance the progression of of of, of the careers mm. of of the younger. Mm. Uh, executives or, or precisely, managers. Precisely. Precisely. Uh, that that should um, should be uh, one of the solutions. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then then again, we're, we're back to this issue of health. Um, mm. I mean, not not everyone in the sixties uh, are not well. I mean, with with, with uh, current technology, yeah, with yeah. with with current medical yeah. care, a lot of people function. Pretty well, actually. At yeah, 60. Up, yeah uh, up to yeah. seventy. Yeah. Even up to seventy. Yeah, I mean, yeah you can't expect you. them to run a marathon, agree. but um, <laughs> I they, agree uh, with you, bro. They I could agree. still walk yeah. up the stairs. Yes. six flights of stairs. That sounds more like you, bro. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, 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 trying yeah. to. Yeah. Trying. <laughs> but after all, we are not looking at a big percentage of these people. Yeah. We are not. Yes, certainly, we're yes, not. Yeah. yeah, we are only trying to see and appreciate the small numbers from each organization. To give them the chance to be part of the workforce. I yeah. mean, that's how it is. Yeah. Well, well, I, I suppose if if, if 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 there is a way of making sure that only a certain part, a certain number of people actually go on mm. to contribute, I mean, the, the company has, has has got to come up with policies that uh, ensure uh, only those who can contribute, r- rather than just based on age. Yeah. And yeah. and and, and um, yeah, age. Uh, they. They got to be looked at in, in terms of their contributions in the past and, and also what they're capable of doing it. Yeah. And I, I forgot to mention this. It's, it's on in my notes. Um, yeah. The networking. Yeah. You can't build networking overnight. I mean, people who've been there for ages would have networked yeah. to such an extent that the company is going to benefit from that. Yeah. Very tremendously. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, the saddest part of life is. Mm-hmm. Um, 
is saying goodbye to, to a job. Uh, I think uh, because you know, um, I, I I had uh, something from Shakespeare here. From Shakespeare. Yeah, all good things must come to an end. Yeah. Um, but Shakespeare also said in Romeo and Juliet, mm. "Why waste your love on someone who doesn't appreciate it?" Something like it's that. It's very yeah. deep, bro. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, which means that you know. If you stay in a particular job for a long period, for a long period of time, mm. I'm trying to be your devil's advocate here, trying to be on the other <laughs> side. Uh, expectation is the root of all heartache. That's Shakespeare as well. Yep. Uh, so you just have to live and um, comfort yourself mm. with um, the fact that tomorrow is never promised. I love that. It came from somewhere. And um, there's another one. 60 is a new 50. So seek new opportunities, yeah. learn new things, rethink of tired processes. Mm. There you go. If you have to leave, you have to leave. I mean, yeah. uh, but be positive about it and yeah. uh, leave in, in grace and yeah. not uh, in anger. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that it's, it's possible to just uh, uh, go into retirement, not abruptly, but over a period of time. And yeah and be prepared for new opportunities um, yeah. after, the, uh, after the fact that you have to leave. Yeah, that's true. Okay, my last question to you, uh, Prof. Increasing the retirement age in Malaysia could deny job opportunities for youth or limit the recruitment of younger workers into the workforce. What's your view on this? Could the extension really affect our young graduates' employability? It's denying people from mm. coming into the job. Mm. Uh, but, but then again, um, I, I was strangely, I was, well, interestingly, I was at, um, at a seminar with CEOs, mm. CEOs, mm. and they, they, were, they, they were talking about people not getting jobs mm. after a good university education. All right. mm. And um, one prominent CEO said, you know, th these are two different things. Here yeah. you are training people to be good, yeah. and here you are, not enough jobs for them. Yeah. It's a different kettle of fish. So, and, and he was trying to imply that mm. job availability is actually a function of the economy. Yeah. So if the economy is good, then um, you will lessen the impact of people who stay on to a job being, um, denying those from coming in. Yeah. So um, yeah. it, it, it's not the end of the road. Yeah. Um, I, I need to quote this to you, you know, it, this is very important because um, they, they, they did a study um, uh, that was published in a new England Journal of Medicine. Mm. And I, I'm just going to read it out to you. A massive study in America found that the most productive age in a man's life is 60 to 70, believe it or not. Yes, interesting. Yeah. And uh, where I'm in at the moment is the third most productive age, which is 50 to 60. I don't know where you are, but anyway, <laughs> 70 to 80 is the second most productive age. And the average age of a CEO is 63. 63. Yeah. Um, the average age of a of Pope is 71. Well, that's going to be relevant here. But anyway, um, th there you are. It's, they, yeah, it's factual. It's, I mean, it's factual, yeah. and but but be be fair to employers. Yeah, economic yeah. bad economic times could make mm. uh, difficult decisions of uh, course. Of course. much easier. <laughs> yeah, it's true. After all, like I said earlier, Prof, we are not looking at a big percentage of these people in that category of that age group. Yeah, it's a small percentage. Like in the UK, if I'm not mistaken, I read somewhere that in 2014 to 2017, there was less than 30% only of those that wanted to go back to the workforce. Okay. You know, people in their, in their retirement age, because there it's 60 and all that, 60 years old. It's only about less than 30%, Prof. That's so just a small percentage. Precisely. It's and it doesn't affect for the, the younger generations in their chances of getting a job. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's just a lame excuse if I look at it. You know, trying to say that, oh, the younger, the older generation is taking away the job of the, for the younger younger uh, uh, employees. I, I would want to I, agree with you on that yeah, point. But, yeah. but then again, I'm at the age where, you know, I can be biased in my opinion. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, I'm, it, it's, it's, very, uh, it's very nice to, to know that just 30% of people would like to come yeah. back. Yeah. And that's not going to deny the young kids from getting the that's job. That's what I'm trying to say. Plus yes. the fact that if the economy actually opens up yes. and, and, yeah. and, and we have better opportunities yes. For, yes. for the different industries. I mean, it's, got, it's a big cake for everyone to share. I mean, there's enough for everyone. You know. it, it, is, it is, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. I, that, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. 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 
there you have it interesting sharing prof if employers are avoiding hiring older employees either by accident or design they really ought to rethink their strategy obviously the major reason should be because of its right to judge people on their ability and competency people in later life are increasingly looking to stay in work and it's important that more businesses look for ways to support them we need to recognize the aging workforce and that post retirement employment is part of the future world of work employers will need to utilize the older generation of workers to remain competitive no amount of training can make up for the decades of wisdom and work experience they can bring to the table once again thank you to prof azrin arifin for joining us at today's ecm talk we hope to see more of you prof in our other sessions in the future before i sign off my a must parting words please don't forget to like share and subscribe to edu channel malaysia or ecm until we meet again in our next session stay safe Don't forget your mask and sanitizer. Take care. Bye. Jumpa lagi. Hello Malaysia. Hello world. Be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. my line. I'm, I'm sorry.